Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome to Going In Raw Dirt Sheet, the only place you need to be going for your pro wrestling news because we look at all the dirt sheets out there in the world and we compile them all here and and we do good things, Larson. Well, we do we good just, things on this show. We talk about the best stuff that's happened over the last week. That's what we do. Talking about wrestling. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're available uh, right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson and we're available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because... Uh, you know, otherwise you're not going to be subscribed to the channel. How will you know there's new going in raw episodes, Larson? If you're not subscribed to the channel, well, you have to hit that bell thing too. Oh, that's true. They so you get you notifications and new things are up. It's a two-step process: one, <laughs> subscribe; two, hit the bell. Yeah. Um, we're also at Patreon at Patreon.com/slash Stephen Larson. We just kind of redid our Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, new tiers. Yeah. Well, a new tier, new addition to tiers. We Good sh- stuff. Check it out. We shot the NXT 205 live recap earlier today. We had 30 people watching a very janky live stream. That was not best value. No. But I promise I'll get that fixed by the next live stream. Yes. So, oh, speaking of live streams, uh, this Sunday, we're going to be live streaming our reactions. Strictly our reactions yeah. to Money in the Bank. No frame of the actual pay-per-view will ever be shown during our live stream. Oh. Just us. We are not the WWE Network. No. You can, in fact, uh, uh, get a trial subscription to the WWE Network and watch Money in the Bank for free on Sunday. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Just go to wwnetwork.com forward slash going in. <laughs> I'm well, joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> the first part of that URL is correct. Everything <laughs> that precedes the slash. Is yes. wwnetwork.com really a thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. That's, what I, that's where I go to. wwnetwork.com is how I get to nice. WWE Network. Anyways, Lars, we're not here to talk about all that, all that business. We're here to talk about wrestling. Uh, let's talk about John Cena, who is now a free agent. Now, this is kind of old news. They started advertising this on Raw. They did like a little thing where they said, John Cena coming back July the 4th. And and it very awkwardly placed in italics. It was italicized as opposed to the rest of the John Cena is coming back. Free agent. Yeah. Now, ratings are very low right now. Yes. So we're thinking, and uh, Dave Meltzer at Wrestling Observer is also thinking, that this is because ratings are crap. John Cena is a proven draw. Draw, like he's one of the very few. Even even Brock Lesnar. Granted, they were up against game. Well, whatever the last game was. Game for five. The, game five of the NBA Finals. And and still, Raw did terribly this week. Second yes. lowest of the year, right? Or um, ever? I think it was so. bad. It was really bad. It was, it was really, really bad. bad. Yeah. Uh, Meltzer does talk about uh, Cena's parent free agency um, in the newsletter this week saying, quote, the free agent idea is that he can work on both Raw and SmackDown, which would give him, sorry, which would get him on more pay-per-view shows and give him a wider variety of opponents. Good idea. Yeah. Um, And he continues, um, quote, I have no idea why they're pushing the Cena return to the uh, 4th of July show since a hard push for a Cena return will do numbers. But July 4th is the single worst date of the year historically for wrestling to do ratings because so many people aren't home in prime time. So they're out watching fireworks here in America. So let's get this straight. It's what not- fireworks do you want to see? Real ones or John Cena's verbal fireworks uh, uh, talking trash about somebody? I'll be honest, real fireworks are, uh, are kind of overrated. They really are. Um, but, you know, we're, we're obligated at this point because it's a tradition. It is, and, and, and the town that we grew up in that I still live in, 4th of July is a major deal. Yeah, it really is. You don't skip out on 4th of July. 9 o'clock, or 9.30 rather. Parade. Parade. And it's the best thing. At, look, I, I, am, I am firmly a hometown guy. I love to watch our podunk towns parade. And I know it's a city technically. It's a town though. It's come on. And it's fantastic. We sit there and uh, we watch this crap and it's amazing. It's fantastic. And then uh, usually we'll, you know, you will either go to like the fair they have going on, eat a bunch. We'll go to our friend's house for a barbecue. We'll swim in the pool. Yeah. And then we'll sit outside and we'll watch the fireworks. It's a, it's a day long affair. It's a day long affair. It's fantastic. 
uh, our friend's house that we usually go to is right down the street from my parents' house. So I like to spend some time there napping. Yes. Doing nothing. That's a great idea. It's fantastic. The one thing I probably will not be doing is watching John Cena's return live anyways. Yeah. That's what DVRs are for or Hulu. So that's going to be so the 4th of July is it's Tuesday. Is a Tuesday. So we're probably not going to be doing a raw recap. I, I can't believe Raw is going to be off the hook that Monday. Probably not. I mean, here's the thing, dude. Well, we could. We can just do it remotely before we go to the parade or do it on location at the 4th of July parade. I kind of just want the day to, to ourselves. Okay. We can take one raw recap off. I can't believe that the 3rd of July. When is when is Great Balls of Fire? Um, that's the go home show for it. That's the go home for Great Balls of Fire. God, we're gonna have to do something. Well, you know, we could do. We could do it that night. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I just want the for like the it's the Fourth of July, and we're gonna have a busy weekend before that because that's the New Japan shows in Long Beach. We work for ourselves. We can yeah. take a day off. Well, this is YouTube. You can't take a day I off know, on YouTube, man. I know, I know. We'll figure something we out. We did take but... a day off for Memorial Day. But anyways, we're getting off way off track here. We're supposed to be talking about John Cena, his free agency, what that means going forward. Well, I think what is he is... going to do? I think this is a good idea because SmackDown is so stacked at the top. Yes. I mean, Raw kind of is, too. But, you know, it's established. I think what it's doing is in, in the same manner that... Brock Lesnar has already been established as a part-time marquee name. This is establishing John Cena as well as a marquee part-time name. You yeah. know, he's he's firmly gone from the days of being around full-time. We all know that. Um, he's here as a special attraction. He shouldn't be bound to one show. The Undertaker was not bound to one show. Well, he said that once. He said that one time. Yeah, but... Was he ever draft? Was he ever actually drafted? No, no, he just showed up to SmackDown and said that he was a SmackDown guy, and then like a month later, he shows up on Raw saying he can go wherever he wants to go. Yeah, exactly. So you know, he said he can go. Where, so when he came back, he did what he wanted to do. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think this is good. Um, I wish they would have done it, and maybe they'll address it when he does return. I don't know because I'm not going to watch it. Um, well, we'll watch it, just not live. Just not live. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's going to say something about what this means in terms of storyline free agency. But uh, the, the show is hurting right now. We were talking about this off camera about our business. And, you know, anybody can look at our YouTube numbers. And they've experienced a bit of a drop. Only a drastic drop. But there has been a little bit. And I honestly think it's because I think we're such a WWE heavy channel. Because it's what performs best. Exactly. I mean, it's it's the biggest company in the world in terms of wrestling. It's what everybody knows. When interest wanes for that... It's across the board. Interest is going to wane for products and shows that talk about it. And that's just, you know, we're totally fine. Everything's great. Like, the YouTube Adpocalypse thing is starting to figure its way back into... Maybe, some, hopefully. Hopefully, normalcy. Um, so, everything's fine, but it's just... I, I firmly believe that where the WWE goes, our business will probably go there as well. Fair point. Yeah. Um, so uh, hopefully this will help ratings. But yeah, putting them on the 4th of July is weird. This it is, is weird. weird. But, yeah. you know, we might, or sorry, WWE might get a, 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 a quick ratings pop when Cena returns. But will they be able to sustain it? I mean, what kind of program is going to be necessary for Cena to be in to keep those ratings at the elevated level. Because, like, he'll show up. The 4th of July show will get a, a, a modest mm -hmm. increase because it's on a holiday. Yeah. But say he's on the following week. I mean, it's not like SmackDown is going to suddenly top 3 million viewers. Yeah. Well, okay, and that, that's and another... If, and, if, and if by some miracle it does happen, then if he's on TV consistently for two months, they're not going to reach that number the whole time he's on. Right. Well, here, okay, here's, here's the other thing to consider, though, is... So he's going to be showing up. I, I I would imagine the fact that they call him a free agent means that he's going to be doing something on Raw. Yeah. That has to be the case. Otherwise, he would just come back to SmackDown, and he's been a SmackDown guy anyways. Yeah. So I think it does mean he's going to go to Raw. And I do actually feel not just our business, but the fact that SmackDown, which we think creatively has been very good, yes. the ratings have also been dropping for SmackDown. And I believe that... Raw is their main prime alpha show. Yeah. You know, it's like we don't believe that's the case creatively. However, it is the Monday night slot. SmackDown, I think, is still fighting a perception that it's the B show, that it's the B show, that it's filled with three caps, and it's not that anymore. So you have 
a waning interest in Raw, which I think directly translates to SmackDown. Oh, because yeah, yeah, on yeah, Raw, yeah. they advertise stuff for SmackDown. I know. And if people are interested in, oh, things are... I'm jazzed up because of Raw's been so good. That's going to translate to the next. It's like, oh, man, I want more of this. I'm mm-hmm. going to go to SmackDown now. Yeah. And so if Raw's crap, SmackDown's going to reflect that. Yeah, to a degree, yeah. I think that's the case. I mean, unless something's crazy, crazy. Like if Raw this week was up against the M- that NBA game and it did two and a half million uh, and John Cena came back to SmackDown, then we might see something different there yes. because it's not opposed and John Cena's coming back. Yeah, we might have seen uh, SmackDown get two and a half million as opposed to just above two million. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, in terms of in terms of like a sustained, you know, it, it's going to be, how good is it? I mean, honestly, like it, it does kind of flow with, well, how good is the product? Now, we saw Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe. Oh, that was great. Which was great. Samoa Joe's not... A marquee name, though. Not yet, no. You know, this isn't like Goldberg came back to face Lesnar once again. There was a reason that popped ratings, Mm because it's Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're hoping that if this continues to be quality, then the buzz will be out there and people will start coming back to it. Um, Cena coming back, I think, is I think it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Putting him on on July the 4th, even if people, even if it doesn't, you know, it'll get it'll get a boost over what it would have got or or what of what would have happened. Um, and then I think people the next week, if assuming he's back every week until SummerSlam, which I think is probably a stretch, but mm-hmm. maybe he is. Um, well, it's about two months, two and a half months. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if he's still. I imagine he's not filming. Is he filming American Grit still? No, I think that's over. I okay. think it's premiering soon. I think it already did premiere. It oh, did okay. terrible in the ratings. Yeah, yeah, it did not do good. Um, got like a million viewers. Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, and on Fox too. Something really bad like that, um, but anyways, uh, I think you know Cena is going to help no matter what. He's a draw. He's like one of the last draws they have. Yeah. Um, but you know that does beg the question: What is he going to do? Roman Reigns is going to have a big SummerSlam announcement um, on, on Raw this mm-hmm. next week. Um, rumors or people were speculating that it could involve Cena. Mm-hmm. Um, Meltzer in the Observer newsletter said he ran down a couple scenarios. Well, he said Reigns was not one of those. He said right. Rain, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Rain, not gonna be Rain, Rain Cena. Cena at SummerSlam is not in the plans. It's probably more likely going to be he's going to come out say, uh, or Meltzer was speculating he, he might come out say, "I want the winner from Great Balls of Fire at SummerSlam," and then maybe Braun, who's apparently already been cleared, he might come out and spoil that party. Yeah, um, which might get his, which could do any number of things. I don't yeah, know. I mean, well, I mean, might, like right now, Reigns has nothing going for Great Balls. Great of Balls, fire, which fire. means that could be Braun. Which will lead to Braun Lesnar yeah. at SummerSlam. Um, maybe I mean, do you think does that mean Braun's going to go over? Oh, Reigns? it'd have it's, to be. Yeah, it'd have to be, right? And maybe the the story of Reigns uh, getting to WrestleMania is, is he finally beats mm-hmm. Braun again? Yeah. Later on the fall, early next year, even though he beat Braun already at not the Rumble but the pay per view after that, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, the good thing about all this is that I do believe that I believe that between. What was the last major paper? It was Mania. And then you have that sort of honeymoon after Mania where new stuff is happening. But then after that, you know, what would you have? We had Backlash. We had... It really isn't until Money in the Bank. It isn't until Money in the Bank. There's a there's a pretty long... There's like a two-month lull mm-hmm. of just spinning wheels. And, you know, we've been hearing talk about how uh, WB, especially with uh, Strowman getting hurt, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of had to scrap a lot of their creative yeah, yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. kind of what they've been doing is yeah. just keeping things together long enough to get to SummerSlam. And then even, you know, with the superstar shakeup, I don't think that really achieved the level of, you know, sustained interest because yeah, the, the, the post that, you know, those episodes of the superstar shakeup that, that happened right after mania didn't pretty it? quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two weeks after. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that we, we really liked the outcome of that. Mm-hmm. I thought the raw, we both think the rosters really shook out well, um, because of that, and then you had Samoa Joe. Well, he was before Mania, but uh, but yeah, there's been a lot of spinning of the wheels. Yes, and I think that especially with Money in the Bank, with uh, with Lesnar coming back, to Lesnar defend the coming title, back, and then SummerSlam the next month, perhaps Braun. I think that post Money in the Bank, and then Great Balls. Once they start the ramp up to SummerSlam, things are going to get a lot more intriguing. And I would think that on the business side of things that would lead to better ratings. One would hope. You know, and there's not a lot of I mean, football didn't start till what August, September. September. Um, 
nobody, you know, baseball, they want to get the World Series in October, but don't really care. I mean, people yeah, care yeah. No, that, they do, but, but uh, baseball does better, uh, from what I understand, uh, regionally versus nationally. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there's not a lot to oppose them. There's no election. Um, cause I remember that was like the big thing last year also was like all the Trump Hillary debates that were going on. Everybody wanted to see that yeah. circus show. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, what's Cena going to do? Gender Mahal at SummerSlam. But then why is he going to, you know, why is he doing, making a big deal about this? Maybe in the meantime, he's going to do something with great balls. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Remains to be seen. It'll be interesting. Yep. Um, uh, uh PW Torches, Wade Keller. Let's move on to the next story. No segue whatsoever. Next story. Um, uh, mentioned on a recent episode of the live cast. How about this? Is Cena going to take on Triple H? Speaking of Triple H. There you go. Um, uh, Wade Keller mentioned on live cast that Triple H has grown frustrated with the way many former NXT stars have been booked once they've been called up to the main roster. Keller states that much of the effort put into developing NXT talents isn't paying dividends on the main roster. Um, but Triple H, you know, it's Vince's call. Yeah. So he can't really do much about it. Yeah. But it's a source of uh, frustration for him. For the game. Um, what culture did a write-up um, about uh, Wade Keller's statements? Names mentioned by Keller include Bailey. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Sasha Banks. Don't really make She's sense. really over. Yeah. And the Cruiserweights, which we've talked about almost ad nauseum about the yeah. problems with uh, 205 Live. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, you could bring up American Alpha, Ty Dillinger. Apollo Cruz, mm-hmm. um, who else brought up from NXT? Those are the those are the pretty those are the big names right there. I mean, you can you can also point to any number of success stories. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You know, I mean, I think they've done a fantastic. A lot of people disagree with this, but so far in how they seem to perceive Shinsuke Nakamura, they've as soon as he came to SmackDown, he's been uh, presented as a huge star. Yes, they, whether the the, the storylines around his arrival have been interesting is another story entirely. You he can tell treated, the intent is there. He is treated like a huge star. Um, Finn Balor treated, treated like a huge, star. huge. Uh, Kevin Owens is Kevin treated Owens like a pretty major star. Treated huge. I mean, it's it's. Uh, Let's see here. Who else? Baron is Corbin. They is probably the Baron one name Corbin, I could think yeah. of who. You know, wasn't a major deal in NXT that they've really done a good job of developing while he's on the main roster. You know, it's interesting too when you think about it. Alistair Black kind of has a Baron Corbin in terms of how they're. Because I, I noticed this when Baron Corbin, when I first started watching NXT and I noticed how they were booking Baron Corbin, it reminds me of how they're booking Alistair Black now. They kind of kept Baron out of the big title picture. They just sort of had him killing people left mm-hmm, and right, mm-hmm. and then they just moved him along up well, to the Well, he main was roster. in a, a brief feud with Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe to be number one contender to the NXT title. Okay, all right, all right. That was a matter of maybe, I don't know, a month of yeah. NXT shows. But, yeah. You know, he didn't win the, any of those matches. But on the, I remember on the, on his ascent, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was just destroying, you know, relatively, you know, weaker opponents. Um, and that's kind of, I wonder if they're going to take the same kind of route with Alistair Black as like, let's just book him really strong, keep him away from anybody who really needs to be protected. Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, with the, with the intent of bringing him up. And I think he's much more ready for prime time than Baron was when he yes. came up and look how well Baron's done. Yeah. Um, so no, your, your point about Baron is absolutely correct. He's the kind of guy who I think this might be tailored to because there is that developmental aspect of NXT Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe. They came through NXT as kind of a formality. They came there to boost the brand, Mm -hmm. not to develop, maybe to get used to the WWE style, their way of working. Yeah, and I think at least probably for Finn and Shinsuke to develop a a larger uh, personal brand in the States. Absolutely, yeah. Understand what the demon was. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, exactly. So American audiences could get more familiar with them. But the point about... We, we said this about Apollo Crews was brought up way too early. Yes. Way too early. We were s- surprised, yes. to say the least. Um, American Alpha was brought up too early. They were brought up. We were really surprised about that. We thought they could have used a lot more time in NXT. Um, Alexa Bliss was brought up early, but it's kind of a credit to her, to, to how good she is, mm-hmm. that she's been able to kill it every time she's been given the opportunity. Yes. Even that terrible, Bailey, this is your life segment, it wasn't because of her. She no, did what she it was could just, with it. It was not good material. Um, um, Bailey, they've they've fumbled her uh, creative storylines pretty much since she got brought up. But you know what? Ba- Here's the thing about Bailey, though. I, I totally, you're absolutely right. 
it's not like Bailey was called up too soon. No, she wasn't. It's just I honestly think I I really do think Bailey's kind of a tough nut to crack when it comes to figuring out why something works so well in NXT versus why it tanks on the main well, roster. Well, I can tell you one reason why it's tanked on the main roster at least recently is that they take It's they, one thing for heels to antagonize their opponents. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. But the way Alexa Bliss belittled her mm. and then beat her, yeah, it just makes Bailey look weak. Yeah, they they don't they they seem to only know to go to the well of the superficiality of the Bailey character. Yes, that's all they're doing is oh she wanted to be a star when she was a kid and she never grew out of being a kid, which could make her well the first part of it could make her really relatable. Yeah, you know th- this is a dream she had when she was young. She fulfilled that dream. Who hasn't wanted that to happen? Yeah, but they're acting like she's socially stunted. Yes, (laughs) and that's not really what they should be doing. No, Um, and so, so I Bailey, but 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 that being said, that being said, I could see how getting Bailey over on the main roster would be a challenge. I think that they're failing in that challenge, but I could see how it's a bigger challenge than say like Apollo Cruz, who simply needed more time to build his brand. Yes. He needed time to like get to get to know who he well, was. Well, even in NXT, he never really had opportunity to no, he was there, develop yeah. a character. He was there so he he wasn't there very long at all. It was no, weird. No. Like he had NXT champion written all over him. Yeah, if he had been there for a year. Yeah. Um so it is it's it's bizarre, I mean, you know, nothing Triple H if if this is true, nothing Triple H can do about it no. because you know, it's Vince is in charge and um, the cruiserweights again. Sasha Banks is that's an oddball right there because Sasha Banks is supremely over. Oh, She's yes. a multi-time champion, and they plug her. In, they, they can they can plug her in on two hundred five live, and she'll pop ratings a little bit. But then that segment on Raw this past week where uh, it was kind of ho hum, mm-hmm. she comes out, and you know then crowd starts pops paying attention huge, and then yeah, there's intensity to the segment. I think you can. Sasha Banks has been a success. Maybe maybe Triple H saw more. Maybe maybe he saw Charlotte levels of success. I mean, I would think he'd have to think Charlotte's been a success. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a. So I'll always go back to that Hell in the Cell match that uh, Sasha should have won yeah. in Boston. Yeah. That could have been like a transcendent moment. Yeah, I know. I know. And by having Charlotte win. Seeming, seemingly last minute, last minute decision um, deprived the audience and the WWE universe of a potentially transcendent moment. I could have, I mean, dude, you can totally see it's like writing a book, and but you, it's one of those things where you came up with like a perfect ending, and then you like write backwards, and it's like, yeah. oh man, this is so perfect, it builds perfectly. And if Triple H was the architect of that particular, you know, storyline, even in, even in a, in a in a very broad sense, and then Vince wakes up and oh yeah, no, Charlotte's going here. What? Why would you do that? This was the perfect ending to this. This yeah. was uh, this was great. Why yeah. are you doing that? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You know, and it's like, oh well, you know, and it's some stupid old school wrestling reason. Some, you know, well, I, li- I don't like people to go to the hometown because it gets more heat on the heel. All right, well, well that's the problem not with really that, a priority. The is problem it? with that now is that now people know about that, and yeah. so the people getting heat aren't the heel. It's now they creative. have to reference it. I know with Rich Swan. I know, and I went. And I kind of with wonder, Randy Orton now. I kind of wonder if they had Swan go over, they referenced it because they knew that Orton was gonna was gonna lose in his hometown. Maybe. So oh, let's try to throw them off in the most obvious way possible. Um. So and it, that, that, that that match is absolutely meaningless. So it's like, yeah, he broke the curse, but who really cares? Like, yeah. It wasn't a match that meant anything. So uh, I don't know. This it, it 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 is interesting though because we've heard that the most fascinating thing that I've heard Triple H say recently is NXT isn't anywhere close to, to what his he wants vision be, yeah. is for it. And I'm really curious if if there's any if if Vince might be getting in the way of that vision or if or if it's just a process that he's sort of yeah, yeah. you know he has to take step by step. Um but I, I honestly believe that when Vince steps down or whatever happens when Vince is no longer in power, I, I'm really fascinated to see where because I think that Triple H does that, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's not perfect, but I think he has his finger on the pulse of a lot of the potential that wrestling can can do. Yeah, yeah. And he sees this stuff out there, and it wouldn't surprise. Like, tell me the Cruiserweight Classic didn't have shades of best of the Super oh, Juniors, yeah, it was great. you know? Yeah. And it's like he sees that stuff, and he's you know he sees what it can be 
or the PWG crowd. Tell me he wouldn't he wouldn't love that feel for a show. Oh, I know. Um, because when people see that, they get excited for the product. Yes. Um, and yeah, that that old school way of sort of <laughs> that old school out of touch way of thinking that we sort of superficially or not superficially, but uh, you know, it's very presumptive to think that that's just all Vince. Yeah. But at the same time. Maybe it is. Well, it could be a large part of it. Yeah. No, we don't really know, but uh, anyways, speaking of hating the product, <laughs> next story, Big Show apparently hates doing TV, uh, WWE TV. Yeah, he was on Talk as Jericho and voiced his displeasure about TV taping. This was pr- pretty shocking honesty here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. like I love when like old veterans are in the I don't care phase. I know, it's great. Like, I'm just going to say this stuff. So he said... Oh, your transcript courtesy yeah. of WrestleZone. I'm going to give them a shout out. He said, I hate TVs. TVs, I just want to bash myself in the head with a hammer because they're just long, useless, time-wasting, bullshit days where you sit around all day for some freaking idea that absolutely sucks, debating it for hours, 17,000 different inputs. You know, one or two guys lace their wrestling boots up in their lives and they're talking. That sounds like Jimmy Jacobs maybe right there because, I mean, uh, and the other ones have never laced up a pair and don't know shit but for some reason, they're telling you what to do. I wonder what Jericho's face was while he's oh, saying this. Um, he says he continues. So you're just walking around baffled going, why are we doing this? And uh, he went on to say that he prefers uh, the, the house shows. He says, I like live events. There's not as much BS backstage. It's just me and the guys. I like that part. I like getting out and working. I've done a lot of things where I just walk down. I knock someone out and I leave. I hate that. I get it. I'm old. I'm beat up. And they're trying to help me out and trying to extend me. But I like getting in the ring. And he continues. Um, and that's the thing at heart. Whether you like my character or not. And most of the shit I've done on TV and pay-per-view. I don't get to pick to do anyway. So don't be mad at me. Be mad at the people that booked this shit. But getting in the ring. I love working. That stuff that's going on now. There's a lot of change going on. There's a lot of new talent. With a lot of new opportunities. I'm okay with that. They should get the TV time. They should get the pay-per-view time. I'm totally fine with it. Just don't make me come on Mondays when I don't have anything to do. That shit pisses me off. If I'm if I'm coming, use me. If I'm not, send me home. Whoa! I could see how that'd be frustrating. Though. Pipe bomb. <laughs> Sitting there at the top of the ramp going off. You're glad handing yes men. Yes. Yeah. Um it's kind of interesting, like some of this stuff. The thing that that always that I always find peculiar is um I mean, number one, this is refreshing honesty. Oh, yeah. But the gripe that pro wrestlers, and maybe it's just the older school guys, because I think the newer school guys probably just understand this is part of the process. But when when they gripe about uh, writers, this is what yet another job that I would never want to have is being a writer. because, And it's not just dealing with the maddening. Like I would think that you would have to just learn how to deal with the crazy of Vince McMahon. Yeah. Like knowing that, hey, I've got a great idea. And then he's going to crap on it or turn it or even worse, turn something that I did into something horrible. Yes. You know, that's the worst. Um, but it probably like I would hate working like with certain talents probably because, you know, you're probably like, hey, so I got this approved by uh, Pat Patterson, uh, Randy Orton. And he said, you want to do this? And Randy Orton's like, I don't do that crap. Pat Patterson said yes. <laughs> Well, I kind of wonder, and maybe this, the writers aren't given an opportunity um, to get to know the talents. Yeah, that could be. I mean, like if I know, I know, I don't know if the entire writing staff, but a lot of them travel at least to the televised shows. Mm-hmm. You always see them milling them back and yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, in the but I'm assuming beyond that, they're uh, at Titan Towers mm-hmm. working during the rest of the week. You think? So you know they're not on the road. You know, I'm sure maybe there's beyond just going over scripts. Just maybe passing by people in the hallway. Yeah, it's hard beyond what you see on TV to get to know who you're writing for. Yeah, you know, yeah. unless you get that kind of time with them, it's hard to know what they may might be into or, and not what they feel comfortable doing, what they're not comfortable doing. Yeah, you know, whereas in you know the booking committee days, you had you know you had your head booker and you had a few people helping out, and they were all former wrestlers. Yeah, they knew everything about <laughs> yeah. everybody on the roster. Every time it was Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, and he's out there wrestling half the matches too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a familiarity there that's probably missing now, and I'm I'm not going to cast the blame on writers for that because they probably just 
based on their schedules, don't get the opportunities. Well, no. But and same with the wrestlers. They probably don't have the time to sit down with a writer for a couple hours and just talk. Yeah. Get to know each other. What, but what's interesting about it, though, is that, and like I said, I would think that guys that are coming through like NXT, like a Baron Corbin, for example, like I, I would be surprised if I ever heard Baron Corbin say, yeah, these guys never laced up his boots. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because he came up, you know, there have been writers. He hadn't laced up his boot before he went to NXT. Right, exactly. And it's like there have been plenty of writers around in wrestling. Like that's been ingrained in the product for a little while, you know. I mean, I know like when we first started hearing about them bringing in like Hollywood writers, it wasn't that long. I mean, it was like, what, 15 years ago, maybe? Something like that, yeah. Like when Freddie Prinze Jr. was around. Yeah, yeah. Then it was like, really? They're bringing guys like that? It was kind of uh, towards the tail end of the Attitude Era, I think. Yeah, yeah, after yeah. After yeah. Russo and Ferreira left. Right, exactly. Yeah. I think that started happening more often, yeah. Right, that's what I'm thinking, too. And so it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just the kind of thing that, you know, Big Show's one of those guys who, you know, he's a big dude. And to have some little writer guy telling him what to do, who's maybe only been on the job for a couple months. I mean, that, I think there's, there's a bit. But I would have thought that he'd be dealing with that. With, like, the high turnover rate. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's just been the one part of the job that's always bugged him. Could be. And so now he's just sort of vocalizing it. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I don't know. That, that That's kind of interesting, uh, his take on it. Because, I mean, with him, it's kind of true. It was kind of surprising to see him come out last week uh, when he was helping out Enzo. And he yeah. was the mystery, the mystery partner that yeah. Enzo called a favor for. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And he touches upon something here that I've always wondered um, his last line that uh, if I'm coming use me if not send me home like mm -hmm. do people travel to Raw not knowing whether they're going to be used on the show or not that's a considerable expense you know for performers who have to pay their own travel expenses yeah I would think that if if they show them oh, I, I have no idea yeah you would think if they showed up they're getting paid because the understudy gets paid. Like I'm. Well, I mean, they get paid. They have their downside gu guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, on top of that, they get paid when they use it on te on mm. television. Yeah, that's my understanding. So if they spend X number of dollars on a rental car in a hotel for the night, mm -hmm. um, and show up at the arena and they go to the, the show breakdown, see them not on it. Yeah. Do they get paid? What if they're, you know, like in the background of a shot? Does that count as being on TV? They get paid for that? You would think so. I would think that there would be some sort of like... Well, I know wrestlers aren't unionized. No. But if, they, if they're if they on TV as a performer, they don't have SAG cards? No. That's different, huh? Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah I don't know. I would think... Okay, so for example, all the guys that came out to separate Brock and Samoa Joe, they all had to have gotten paid. Yeah, I would think right? so. Yeah. Like Titus, who doesn't work a match, but he's out there managing. He yeah, still he gets, gets paid, paid yes. for that. Yes. Titus is like an integral part of like several storylines right now. That's great. It is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was kind of interesting uh, and refreshing honesty from a guy who could leave now and be. Well, his contract's up uh, early next year. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But he's a headlining Hall of Fame guy. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He's had a great career. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so when this, a guy like that talks, it's always good to listen and pay attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of I, I really want to listen to that now and, and hear what Jericho's sort of retort to that was. I know. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Um, speaking of interesting, um, the, there seems to be a possibility, however remote, that London could be getting a WrestleMania. Um, the Independent reported this week that WWE sent out a survey to select WWE 33 attendees. We did not get this survey, so it wasn't sent to everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I didn't give them my uh, right email address. And uh, one of the questions asked which cities fans would like to see host a future WrestleMania. And among Rancho those cities Cordova. listed was London. We don't have a... Sacramento. We're going to have that at the Cordova High football stadium. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that seat's 100,000. No. Doesn't even seat 10,000, Steve. Might not even said a thousand. <laughs> um, the United Kingdom hasn't hosted a WWE pay per view since SummerSlam '92. Yeah, man. Main event: Bret Hart, British Bulldog, British Bulldog for the yeah. Intercontinental Title. Hot match. Yes, hot match. Um, but London did host an NXT Takeover back in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. Completely different thing. I, I, I know. I, I don't know what the live audience is typically for takeovers, especially within the last year when they've kind of changed how things are done with takeovers. Yeah. Um, but with it being on the network. Is on demand. Um, some of the logistical issues of broadcasting a live show from London 
to the states with the time difference mm -hmm. might not be as huge of a deal since maybe a lot of people watch takeovers on demand versus live oh, i yeah, don't know yeah, yeah. but that's all we've always heard that's the stumbling block you know if, if you have a show on at prime time in the uk at eight then that's around noon or one mm -hmm. here on the west coast yeah. but then if you program for prime time here it's like early in the morning in the UK. Well, one of the one of the bigger this this would have this would not have been. And a they're big, not going to do it on tape delay. Well, no, they're definitely not going to do that. If you think about it, one of the bigger problems now, especially now, is so a four hour show wouldn't be that big of a deal. You run that thing at four here, which is when it usually the pre show usually starts, and it starts at eight there, so it goes from eight to midnight for a four hour show. Wait, no, if what? it starts at what time here? Four here. So there's four here. That's midnight. Oh, that's midnight over there. I'm thinking a four hour difference. Never mind. Um, yeah. So start at noon here. It's eight there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Super Bowl starts at three here. Yeah. But that's six over on the way. Oh, but if it's noon here. But it's not going to be a four hour show. It's going to be a seven hour show. That's what I was getting at. A seven hour show is so much different than a four hour show or even like, you know, obviously a three hour show. A seven hour way too much for one sitting. Yeah. So, I mean, the odds of WrestleMania, I'd say are pretty thick. Thin. Because it's a seven-hour show, but I wouldn't be Split surprised. Split it up to two, three-hour shows over I the weekend in London. Be surprised if at some point they get uh, one of the other major four shows, like a SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see SummerSlam going back over there, but I mean, you know, yeah, unless they start scaling back on them WrestleMania stuff, or unless it's a lot of wrestling. I, I could, I could see. I mean, look, I could see them doing. If they really, really want to go to London, if they really want to go there, which I think would be great for mm -hmm. international expansion. And especially if the, the UK show actually gets going on the network. Yeah, absolutely. And over the next couple of years, they can develop a really large following. Yeah. I could see them A larger making, following. I could be really popular. I could see that being the reason to expand WrestleMania to two, a show over two days. How about this? Yeah. Uh, have over two days, one day in the States... One day in the UK. That, the logistics sound like a nightmare. You just have to have two sets. Yeah. Divide the roster in half. Yeah. Well, half the roster it's goes. It's already divided in half. We'll divide the half, combine them, and divide oh, those in half. combine them then. So, so. so it's not like WrestleMania Raw, WrestleMania SmackDown. Yeah. Mix it up. Don't have to watch WrestleMania Raw. It's going to be crap. WrestleMania SmackDown. <laughs> Night two. Perfect. Could be. Yeah, man. Great. Let's do it. Um, that so, way yeah. you, can, you can reference WrestleMania 2. Or they had it in three places. It's uh, like it was like one of the worst ones ever. Well, it wasn't because you of that. Really it, want was, to that. it was just because it was a bad card. Yeah, I don't think the splitting it up in a million different places helped it. There's only three, Steve. Uh, so yeah, I see what you're saying, but it's, it's SummerSlam always possible, but it's not going to be as big a deal. Like they need a mania there in London. Our UK friendos deserve it. Well, yeah, it'd be cool. You and I will get to take the families to London town mm -hmm. if we decide to go. You're really excited about that, aren't you? You love London. You love England. I'd rather I'd rather just go when there's not a wrestling thing going on. To be honest with you, I might just go later on, like next month. I might go to London, take Lacey. Oh, that's a good stretch. Okay, stretch. I feel like this day is stretched on for a long time. I know, right? It's already two forty-five. What the heck? Anyways, let's get to questions. Man. Yes, let's get to questions. First, from Justin Nichols. Justin Nichols. Hey, friendo. So my question might not be the best for SmackDown. He posted this on the SmackDown thread, but I've been listening to some Meltzer and Jim Ross talking about drawing and quality matches. Do you illustration. Do you, no, not illustration. Gotcha. Drawing money. Right. Do you think it's possible for WWE to produce a six-star match or is it too limited to what they can do in the ring? Who would be the two guys that could put on a match close to Okada and Omega? The one I had in mind is the idea you guys said of Nakamura and Styles. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know your thoughts. Uh, I think that... The most important aspect in my mind to, for any quality match is, is not so much related to the moves being done. It's the story they're telling in the ring. Right. Um, because if you watch Okada Omega 2, there's really nothing they did in the ring that... WWE uh, bands. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but it's just the story and the drama and the match were so fantastic mm -hmm. that it was a great match. Yeah. Same with their first match. There's a couple spots in the first match that you can't do in WWE, but the drama, the storytelling was all top notch. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most important thing. Not band moves. Right. Um, it's just giving talents in the ring time 
give him a half hour to tell a really interesting story. Yeah. I mean, I think the closest we've gotten in the WWE ring, I can think of a couple examples, um, DIY Revival, mm-hmm. their second match, the two out of three falls match, mm-hmm. great storytelling, yeah. great match. Yeah. Uh, AJ Styles, Cena at SummerSlam last year, mm-hmm. great storytelling, great match. Shinsuke versus Sami Zayn, yeah. Shinsuke's first match in NXT. Yeah. Yeah, great match. Um, they should do this. WrestleMania 34, they want to top Omega and Okada. Bring back Goldberg versus Taker. Huge drama. Massive story. You know you're taking this question seriously. Storytelling potential. Not taking We it all seriously. know it's Styles and Nakamura. Put them in a ring together. Give them 60 minutes. They'll have an eight-star match. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You think they wouldn't be chomping at the bit to top oh, yeah. Okada oh, Omega? Gosh. Give me a break. Get out of here. Get out of here right now. Dude Harper's drug dealer, Gustavo Gama. Has a question. New Patreon here. Thank you. How do you guys feel about intergender wrestling and how would you bring it to the WWE? He says he'd love to see Charlotte versus Owens or Becky Lynch on 205 Live. I've actually thought about the idea of bringing him to 205 Live. That would be a good way to do it because you're doing some flippy stuff and not like Kevin Owens. I would not want to see Charlotte versus Kevin Owens. A prize fighting brute. I don't want to see that. No, that's that's too, that's shades um, of I think violence. Becky has said that she wants to have a match against James Ellsworth. Yeah, there you go. Um, but I'd rather see like a Becky versus you know like a TJ Perkins or yeah. Leo Rush. He's um, not on two hundred five. Um, but I want uh, to be. Lucha Underground does intergender wrestling mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a murder at I the end of the that, latest yeah. episode. They're cribbing from WGPW, man. That, that was shot a long time ago. Telling you, the, they, they did reshoots just last week All to right. add the murder angle. You don't know anything. W. Steve W. was doing murder before. When did it air? That's the question. W. Steve W. aired the murder live two months ago. Yeah, but what if this, shot, what if this was shot a year ago? Uh, you could have been ripping off Lucha Underground now, you know it. That's, that's, that's not going to hold up in court. Um, uh, Joey Ryan is a huge proponent of intergender wrestling. <laughs> yeah, he is. And uh, some people touch the ding is. So he can flip them over. Yeah. Them. So gross. Um, I mean, Triple H has said that it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. He's pretty much said it's not going to happen. And Triple H is going to be running the company for the next 40 years. Yeah, so it's not going to happen in WWE. Yeah. Um, oh, Kim. Oh, a uh, new patron and first time question here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Do you, you think Raw and SmackDown would be better if they dropped the live TV bit after attending a live Raw event last year? I found it boring. Too much waiting for commercials and setup. Wrestlers don't look like they're having as much fun as they are in non-televised matches. That's true. That's true. And would give WWE more editing time and overall better product. That's my opinion. Was wondering what you guys thought. Yeah, uh, if you had a choice between going to a house show, a pay-per-view, or a Raw or SmackDown, the Raw or SmackDown uh, experience is probably the most boring of the three. Yeah, I could agree with that. Because there's some kind of commercial breaks at a pay-per-view, but not nearly to the extent that there is for a Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. Um, we went to... The, uh, the Raw here in town, Sacramento, after payback. I mean, it seemed like every break was so protracted. Mm-hmm. It does really kill the momentum of the show. Yeah, I agree with that in terms of going to a live event. Um, however, to to his point of would it be better if they dropped the live TV TV bit? I mean, it's not going to happen. Well, not only is it not going to happen, I don't think it would improve the product that we get. I mean, why would it? You know, what are they going to do? Cut the matches so they're like faster paced? I know. What are they do like if someone messes up, they have to go back to that arena and do a reshoot. And plus you'd lose all because of social media. You lose any. That's the my one thing about NXT is that we can read spoilers and, and real time basically and get ahead. Exactly. Get ahead on four episodes at a time. Yeah. I don't really, I don't, I mean, that's, that's the one thing, you know, I, NXT, I've said several times, my favorite hour of TV, but that's my one thing about it is that i I accept that, you know, they post produce it and it's fine. It's great. I love it. Um, but that is the aspect of it that I don't appreciate is that I, you know, inevitably will read spoilers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, for the most part is unavoidable. So I, but I don't think that not being live, in terms of Raw and SmackDown, I don't think it would change the product all that much. No, I really don't. don't think so either. Um, one, two, sweet kid, two Tyler sweet. Wagner. Hey, friendos. Now, I didn't watch the whole Miz tag match on Raw, but with Dean's seemingly newfound shape-shifting abilities, who is the new most powerful oh, being in WWE, Dean or Bray? Interesting. 
Interesting. So we're to assume that Dean wasn't hiding under the ring. Mm. He's a shapeshifter. He's a shapeshifter. Changeling. One of the founders over there in the Alpha Quadrant. See, here's the thing. No. Um, Gamma Quadrant. That if that's Dean's only power, shapeshifting, mm-hmm. that's just one thing he can do. Bray has a, a, a list mm-hmm. of powers. Teleportation. I'd rather teleport than shapeshift. Oh, meets. Yes. I would. Working on your peaks would be a lot easier if you can just shapeshift peaks. You'd always look like a stud. Yeah, I know. But then again, yeah, and teleporting, you'd probably get fatter because why would you ever walk anywhere? I'm going to go to the kitchen. Oh, sandwich. Well, I mean, if you're just teleporting from here to the kitchen, that's like the the height of laziness. <laughs> you can't even walk, walk to your kitchen. Like, if I, like it'd be great if, if – see, here's how Tell I Tell me you at. wouldn't do it all the time, though. Eventually, you just get used to doing it. If, if I had the ability to teleport, I would teleport from here back to my house. It saves me 45 minutes to an hour every day round trip. Oh, yeah. And then I can take that time, go wow. to the gym, work on my peaks. Work on your peaks. That's what you want to do. Work on your peaks. <laughs> um, but Bray has multiple powers, so I still think Bray is the most powerful. He also has some sort of like eye shooting ability. Didn't Randy Orton have glowing eyes? For a moment, yes. And I understood that he got that from Bray somehow. Yes, that's a one-time deal. Wow. But at the same time, Bray always said, well, that whole stretch link up to WrestleMania, he's saying he had satanic powers and never manifested themselves. Well, and, he can project. Well, that's just being cool with the with some of the production staff. Yeah, you know, he also put JoJo under his spell. Oh man, I love you, man. <laughs> JoJo, I love you, man. Oh no, what's this? Alimony, man. It's not good, bro. No, um, he should teleport himself out of that out of that alimony payment. There you up. go. Yeah, no good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Shape shifting versus versus teleportation. I guess teleportation would be the thing. You want to go to London? You're there. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm doing well. The original mystery man, Carmine the Bowler, says, new patron. Thank you. If you could travel through time and space again, great question. If you could travel to any time, something starts with, if you could travel through time and space. Watch live wrestling during the era of territories. Where and when would it be? I would have loved to have sat ringside during the 80s watching WWC in Puerto Rico. Those shows were said to have had insane crowds. I, from what I understand, quite literally, they used to throw bottles of shit. <laughs> Isn't Puerto Rico that where Bruiser Brody died? Yeah. Terrifying. Wouldn't want to go there. Uh, WCCW, on the other hand. Sportatorium. I would have loved to have known what that atmosphere was. ECW in 1994-5 would have been fantastic. Yes. Yes. Where else? Madison Square Garden. 1960 something or another. 68. 68, yeah. Or 69. Bruno, that'd mm-hmm. be great. Uh, give me 1915. I want to see an eight hour Matt Classic between Frank Gotch and George <laughs> Hackenschmidt. Uh, you think they had pretzels back then? What do they have popcorn back then? What do they have? Peanuts? Probably peanuts. Yeah, peanuts. Who wants for a peanuts? Sure. Who wants a peanuts? Maybe some popcorn. lukewarm water. What do you think they drank? I need some beer. But it wasn't like warm back then. They have cold beer yet. Um, 1911. I don't know when refrigeration was invented. I'll have to double check that. <laughs> they didn't have some way of getting ice to people. Well, yeah, yeah, they could do that. Yeah, <laughs> ice existed. <laughs> Did cold exist back yes, then? Yes, it wasn't just all hot. Be- I wouldn't want if it's like a hot day. I don't want a hot beer and no, peanuts. No. <laughs> Look, man, I'm gonna get some peanuts. I at least need some water. Yeah. Put it in the shade, it'll cool down a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Probably was like from nineteen eleven, so it ain't filtered. It's full yellowish. Yeah. It's disgusting. That was that was the thing that grossed me out when I watched Back to the Future Three. When he goes back in time and he sits down and he's eating some food with his, his ancestors. It's like great grandfather or whatever, and they sit down and give Marty McFly a plate. Oh yeah, yeah. And they give him some water and it's like piss water. Yeah. I was like, Marty, what are you doing, man? That'd be the worst. It'd be the little things. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Cloudy, dirty water is a pretty major thing. Well, yeah. I mean, it definitely can be. I'm just saying, who'd have thought that you're undoing in the past going to time travel? You it'd think be a it'd, glass be, of water. it'd be a glass of water? Yeah. You know? Uh, let's see. Glorious Spencer Raymond has a question. Oh, yeah. Still uh, waiting on my first question. Well, here it is. Here Raymond. it is. Spencer. With Seth's current Kingslayer nickname still being used, how about Seth cuts 12 pounds and goes to 205 Live to take on Neville for the Cruiserweight title? Maybe this could get 205 Live that spark of attention it so desperately needs. So his last point there is is true. That would definitely give it a spark of attention. 
Um, I feel like that might be a step back for Seth Rollins. Maybe he just wants to to win every belt. All of them. Is he going to get like transgender and that would surgery? Be, and that would be a, a pretty uh, uh, tremendous challenge to say, all right, I'm going to go to 205 Live and get it to the top of the network ratings. Um, I think it would be a terrible idea. Oh, it's not going to happen. It's yeah. not a great idea. No, it's no. not a good idea. Really bad idea. He's the top face in WWE right now. Well, on Raw at least. Who's top face on SmackDown? AJ. AJ. He's or or uh, Shinsuke. Or Shin, yeah. AJ's the man. We have some video questions. Yes. At the $20 Patreon, Mark, you, you, you can have your video question on the show. We're going to start off with the current Larson Libre champion, Adam Mayhem. You guys were talking about Enzo and Kaz and who could it be and blah, blah, blah. And then um, one of you said, oh, like if it's if it was Kaz, like why is it that he was um, like pissed off at Big Show and all that stuff? And I kind of found a, a, a way that... That that could make sense. Um, if it is Cass, maybe he is pissed off at the fact that Enzo now has, for all intents and purposes, he has backup. And that's not what he wanted. He just wanted to beat up Enzo and get it done with. But now it looks like if he wants to get to Enzo, he's going to have to deal with Big Show, which is not something that he was looking forward to. I don't know, guys. That's that's the way I saw it. So you guys can just let me know what you think. All right? Take it easy. Too sweet. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Um, I don't know what to make of this whole Enzo Cass uh, storyline right now. Yeah, we're pretty confused by it. There's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> I don't know where everything fits it's quite too, yet. It's like they're. T- it's like it honestly feels like they don't know, but they're you. But they're. Tr- <laughs> Are they waiting for the best fan theory and they're, they're going to do that? Yeah. yeah. I, I, it, it honestly feels like they're doing everything they can without knowing the finish. To make, a lot, to, to make the, the, the perpetrator logical? Like the, the, the completion of the storyline, a logical conclusion. I think they don't care about that. Oh, okay. They want everybody to look like a suspect even if it flies in the face of all logic. Could be. That's what it, it... Right? Because it's like, okay, why would the revival always be there unless they did it? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. It's a diversion. So it's the revival. Or it's a one-punch knockout. It's the big show with zero seeming motivation. That doesn't make any sense. So they want you to... They want... They, they're, they're doing everything they can... To make it look like the and the Cass's uh, or Enzo's uh, uh, oh, necklace. necklace, yeah, they're doing everything they can to make us think it's somebody specific, but without any logic, they're going to give us a reveal that will not make everything else make sense mm-hmm. because they do that all the time in wrestling. It's going to be the anonymous raw GM all over again. Exactly. It's like oh, there's all sorts of clues as to who it is. But then it ends up being this, and that doesn't explain why all these clues. Like when you have a good plot with a lot of intricate pieces, the the reveal makes all that stuff make sense. And then you have Lost, <laughs> and then yeah, and then there's Lost exactly. Oh, I love Lost though. I did too. Until that last season, that last episode, even golly, what are they doing with that? I don't know. Justin Brooks has a question. Hey, Stephen Larson. So my question is this. Lucha Underground films their show like it is a TV show. Everything about his TV show, hell, people die in it. Do you think WWE could benefit from going about that route? So instead of uh, presenting it as this is a sporting event, presenting as this is a TV show. I think in certain aspects it could work, and I think, especially with WWE with their budget and their production, if they go all in, I think it could be kind of could be really cool. Just wondering your thoughts on it. Bye. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Um... I mean, this kind of uh, uh, relates to the question we talked about earlier about uh, WWE shooting, um, taping their product again versus airing it live. Yeah, a little bit. Lucha Underground works so well, I think, because it has a very specific style. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't imagine a three-hour Raw like that every week. Making a feature film. I know. Well, okay, here's the thing. You'd basically be asking the WWE to completely change 
wholesale the product that they put out in its entirety. And also, if it's they, a completely if different thing, they wouldn't do it on principle just because they might think they uh, would be successful because it well. It's cool when Lucha Underground does it. Yeah. They're not going to do it just because. And if you really want evidence as to why they shouldn't do it, look at the House of Horrors match. Yes. Which I actually kind of enjoyed. I would love to see more movies like that. But the vast majority of the WWE audience did not want to see that. No. Oh, another question from the returning Vincent Palmieri. Let's see what Vincent has to say. I want from Steve and Larson for both of you to book your dream feud steve i know it's gonna be scott steiner winning every title a la that one meme picture of triple h but bear with me dream feud whatever title whatever opponent or opponents if you're one of those kinds of guys that likes handicap feuds whatever whatever stipulations book it be the booker man that i know you two were born to be also, Steve, what the hell? Send me your shirt size and favorite Bullet Club member so I can hook you and Larson up with some sweet shirts for the Long Beach show. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, so uh, my, my dream feud would be... It would be Stone Cold CM Punk, Macho Man CM Punk. I mean, who wouldn't want Stone Cold versus CM Punk? I thought uh, Stone Cold versus Hogan would have been great. They wouldn't have gone down that route. Mm-hmm. But then if they did, we never would have gotten Rock Hogan. That's true. I wish Stone Cold had the right mindset back then. I wish he wasn't all messed up on energy drinks and whatnot and, and fatigue. Give wrestlers a I know. months off. I know. A year. I know. Just a big stretch of time off. Recharge your batteries. It's never a bad thing to recharge your batteries. Nope. Our monitor on top of the camera is literally out right now because I didn't recharge the battery between shooting. And look what it's doing. It's not working. <laughs> So it's probably going to take its ball and go home like yes. Stone Cold did. What? Yeah, so uh, Stone Cold, uh, who? CM uh, Punk, CM that's what Punk. I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, that's the biggest one. That's Jake biggest Riley one. has a question. Let's see what Jake has to say. Hey, guys, two-time Philadelphia Flyer champion Jake Riley sending in another video question. Now, there's been great gimmick matches in the past. Kane's Inferno match, Undertaker's casket and buried alive match, Mankind's boiler room brawl. My question is, what current WWE superstar gets the next best gimmick match? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jake. So what current WWE superstar gets like the Inferno match, like a casket match, like a boiler room match, yeah. its very own gimmick match? Well, I feel like Bray Wyatt is like the current king of bad gimmick matches. True. Do, do you, okay, so... I kind of appreciate the casket match. Like, what gimmick matches do you actually like? Apparently, according to Observer, they look like they were going to the amb- an ambulance match for Braun and Roman. Mm. Or Telegraph. You know, it's been kind of cool, and they touched upon it during the uh, Wyatt Compound video with a New Day. Is you remember when they were uh, in the field and it was surrounded by trucks with their lights on? Yeah. And out came a bunch of people with the sheet masks on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if that was like an actual match? Oh, that'd have been cool. Like a Wyatt compound match. Like a Wyatt compound so uh, only, lumberjack match. Yeah, not only deal with your opponent, you know, in, in, in the ring, so to say, but then, you know, you get into the trucks, then all the other people beat on you. I want to see, see Alistair Black fight somebody in that church in all of his, like, little vignettes. It's a good idea. Bunch of, it's just candlelight. That'd be good. What about, uh... uh hmm. But, like, uh, uh... What's his face? Uh, Tranquilo. In like a party, like a club dance floor match. That'd be good, but like naked women everywhere. Tranquilo. Good answers. All good answers. All good answers. Next from Adam Fella. With another video question. question. Let's see what Adam has to say. Hey, friendos, it's your six-star savior and Discord club leader Adam Fella here. Returning for another video question. Also, representing the six-star brand, Fun Wrestling. And, as always, I got a question for you. As wrestling fans, we always talk about which New Japan pro wrestling stars should go to the WWE. But, which WWE star should go to New Japan? Uh, I always thought that Dolph Ziggler would be pretty big in New Japan, taking the Cody Rhodes route. 
to New Japan and in Bullet Club even. What do you guys think? Thanks, friendos. Take care. Thank you, Adam, what for a your crap t shirt he's wearing. He's wearing Garbage. the best wrestling t shirt there is. Get W Steve W. You're not even wearing your own shirt. No, I'm not. Um so what WWE star should go to New Japan well, Pro he Wrestling? Mentioned, he mentions Dolph. Yes. And I think that's a good answer. Um, well, obviously, Daniel Bryan's going to head there as soon as uh, his contract is done with. Oh, that's that's happening. He's going to be the latest star of Bullet Club. Don't think so. Hmm. Cody Rhodes is such a star, dude. That yeah, guy's he is great. He's fantastic. What WWE star should go to New Japan? New, new. It's always weird to think that. Do you think the Ascension could find success in New Japan? No, man. They have War Machine there, who's like superficially kind of Ascension esque, but way better. But like actually great wrestlers. Give me a break. I think I have put the, the Ascension in there against Grill of Destiny. <laughs> Who wants to see that crap? Give me Grill of Destiny versus War Machine. What man. about American Alpha? Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good one. American Alpha team, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be good. Um, I could see Aid to English on Taguchi Japan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that'd be good. I got to get that theme song. Start blasting Oh, that's that great. Car right now. Next, CJ Reebly. See what CJ has to say. Hey, friend, o CJ here. So thanks to you guys and what culture at the uh, uh, Internet Darnings event, I've got uh, tuned in to a bunch of these all other really good uh, uh, pro wrestling-themed YouTube channels and podcasts. Uh, so with that in mind, um, <clears throat> if, say, hypothetically, we lived in a perfect world where logistics and resources came together and schedules matched up just right, if you guys could do a collaboration video with any other wrestling uh, YouTube channel, uh, who would it be and what kind of uh, uh, content would you like to uh, make? Uh, I think everyone would agree that uh, you guys in What Culture can make a pretty stellar uh, top 10 video. I would love to see you guys do uh, one of their uh, drinking game reaction videos. I think that would be fun. But uh, I think overall that, I think you guys and Brian Zane over at Wrestling with Regret would do a phenomenal, hilarious review of uh, any Hulk Hogan movie. Uh, anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, CJ. Um, yeah, probably what culture? Yeah, we've been talking about that kind of stuff lately, like expanding our collaborative juices. Yeah. What culture? We're always friendly with those guys. Yeah. Um, Brian Zane. We've met Brian a few guy. times. Yeah. yeah, good guy. It seems honestly like a lot of that stuff, because we run into them at like different events here and there, like once or twice a year. So that seems kind of inevitable. Yeah. I can it's imagine. just finding the time to do it. Yeah, exactly. I think Brian's out a couple hours from us. Yeah. Zane is. Yeah, he's not that far. The wet culture guy. See, they're an excuse for me to go to, to England. Okay. Go be in a wet culture video. There you go. And then you can Skype in. All right. My little phone. You can be like my Alicia Fox on there you my go. phone. Alicia Frick. Next, Next up. Lee Fox. Lee Fox. Hey there, friendos. It's your friend from across the pond, Lee Fox here. I just want to ask one thing. Um, where do you stand on the consistency of... A wrestler dropping a belt if they're not able to defend it within is it 20 or 30 days and um, do you think WWE should be more consistent with that role because let's be honest Brock Lesnar hasn't defended it for nearly two months and they made Naomi drop it what was it a week after she won it or not even that because she legitimately couldn't defend it because she was injured let me know your thoughts guys thanks thank you Lee thanks Lee um uh... Yeah, uh, I mean, it's Brock, so Brock's going to do what Brock wants to do. Yeah, exactly. In terms of defending the title. And also, it's Brock Lesnar. It's it's a special circumstance where, you know, he's got he's probably the most legitimate competitor um, uh, on the roster. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I assume they're going for the, uh, the, the big fight feel, mm-hmm. you know, because boxing titles or UFC titles aren't defended every month. Right, 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 right. You know, it's what, 60 days? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so I imagine that's the template they're working from. Um, so it doesn't bother me. 
Well, you know why it doesn't bother me? Because the lineage belt is not beholden to the universe. The universal mm-hmm. title has what? It's him, Finn, and Kevin Owens. Who cares? And you know? Goldberg. You always forget Goldberg. I always forget Goldberg. No, I, f- I forgot Kevin last time. Okay, you always forget one person. I always forget one person. I mean, you know, that's, that's crap. You know, that's that's not a real belt. Uh, that but is, they're trying to establish that belt by having yeah. it on Brock. No, it's great. I mean, it's it's you know, you can consider it at this point maybe the box office belt. That's totally fine. Do that. I don't care about it. Um, they can use that to pop ratings. That's good. Good for us too. Um, but give me the Jinder Mahal title. Mm-hmm. You know, give me the belt with the with Bruno's lineage. Yes. To it. You know, give me that one. Yes, I agree. And they, you know, that's all the guys that I like besides Finn and Seth or and Samoa Joe. They're all there on SmackDown with that with the WWE Championship. Mm-hmm. That's what I care about. Yes. Last question from Patrick Sparks. Let's see what Patrick has to say. Hey, friend, Nose Pat here. Currently on break at work. It's hot as shit, but thinking of questions. So, what wrestlers do you think were ahead of their time? Doesn't matter what era, doesn't matter what promotion, but just way ahead of their time, whether it be their in-ring skill, their promo skill, or nasty combination of the two. Personally, I think that Raven and Roddy Piper were both very ahead of their time. And then, second part of the question, who do you think in any era just couldn't get over at all in their era that they were in? Or if they moved an era back, forward, do you think they could get over? Who do you think couldn't? What do you guys think? Thanks, my notes. Bye. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, Pat. Pat here. So he wants to know what wrestlers were ahead of their time. There's one right answer, and it's Brian Pillman. Yep. Yep. Brian Pillman. That man was definitely ahead of his time. Way ahead of his time. Absolutely. He's still ahead of his time because, like, he had a gun. And, like, they haven't really started busting those out yet. Did you hear? Did you read in the Observer about that one show? I think the Federation's called Fist. And it's, like, more extreme. Not in terms of it's just, like, the storylines are more extreme. Yeah. Some guy busts out a gun, put it in somebody else's head, and they, it was an I quit match. And because he had a gun to his head, he quit. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, again. People are ripping up time out of ten of their times. W Steve W, WGPW. What's it going to be next? <laughs> well, until some federation starts uh, doing storylines around uh, time and space. Yeah, you know, then we'll see. Fun wrestling, pretty pretty much ahead of their times. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it. It's good. Uh, also, man Patrick, fights cat. Oh yeah, no. Also, Patrick asks, what wrestler in any era can never get over? He was a wrestler who was just. Never going to get over, regardless of what era. You think X Pac would have gotten over, like in the, in like Frank Gotch's time? Probably. He, he was over. Uh, no, he was. Yeah, he was super. He was over, over when he was one, two, three kid. He was over. He was, he over. was over. People liked X Pac when he was teaming out with Kane. He was over. Mm-hmm. It was just when he had X Factor for some reason. The combination, the music, and the music was awful. The pink lighting scheme. And his weird tongue not being able to crotch chop crotch chops. He didn't know what to do with his hands. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know there's somebody else, though. Who else hasn't been over ever and would not have been over ever? Jack Swagger. <laughs> Poor Jack. Yeah, how do you get Jack Swagger over? I feel like Jack Swagger would have been over in the Frank Gotch days. Yeah, probably. He, he kind of comes off like a Gotch wrestler. Yeah. I could see that. Um, one more, and then we'll call it a day. Find one more wrestler. Never would have been over, no matter what era. Shockmaster. Shock, well, that's not. That wasn't that's even, a gimmick, that's I know. That's a gimmick. I know I thought that, too, though. I just didn't say it. Let's look through here. Let's see Randy Hogan. Randy <laughs> Well, no, that's actually good. It'd, it'd be like, you know, somebody busted out with a, a Frank Hackenschmidt gimmick, you know? It's like, wait, Randy Randy Hogan? Well, that's just, he just looks like a crap version of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a garage sale you Hulk know, Hogan. Uh, man. While I was watching In Your House, I was doing some research on Dan Spivey. Oh, yeah. And apparently, he's in WWF the same time as Hogan and had a, a gimmick that was Golden Boy Danny Spivey. And he just looked like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he had yellow tights. Same, but this is like a, a Buddy Landell, Ric Flair situation. Yeah, it's both nature so boy. weird. So weird. It's so weird when they do Like, why would they ever do that? Whose idea? It was probably Dusty's idea. He was WCW at the time. I don't care. It's probably his idea. 
That's great. He's looking through those cars to find someone who wasn't over. Triple H. He'd been over in every era. I know. he would have gotten himself over. Look at He's attacking you from a freaking black hole, Larson. Look at that. Uh, scary. Who else wouldn't have been over in any era? All these people are over, man. John Cena. He'd have been over in every era. Trying to John Cena in the 80s. That would have been great. Who the hell is Johnny Stamboli? I don't remember. Bradshaw would have been over in the Frank Gotch. Oh, yeah. For sure. Anyways. Yeah, anyways. Those are our answers. <laughs> right. Anyways, that's it for Dirt Sheet. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.